man of the moment. They know that actually. You know, today is quite a unique day for us. I want to play with this wonderful audience, our eminent guests and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Spiritual and Temporal to allow me stand on the well spelled out protocol as handled by the man who knows it all. First, I want to thank God that he has brought us here to assemble so that the town can interact with the town. Today is quite a unique day because a new baby was born yesterday in the faculty of uh, arts. Uh, I don't know where whether the Inogram you know, will represent faculty of arts or is going to act on behalf of faculty of communication arts. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we will know. He has an option to, to choose. When you ask me today, it should be for faculty of uh, arts. After that, he can go to wherever he wants to go to. Truly, it's quite a good day to have us here seated to listen to the 86th in the grand lecture, which we know is going to be presented by one of us. The man we call Professor Peter Sukho Kudesu is a professor of marketing communications and applied rhetoric. Well, whatever that means, you will know. And the topic is persuading the persuaders in critical semantic directions to marketing communications. You see, when you have the knowledge, you have the ability to maneuver English, you can deceive so many people. <laughs> uh, we will know at the end of the day whether we can deceive or not. But one thing is very clear. We will know at the end of the day who is persuading who. <laughs> Persuaders, we will know them. We will know those who are persuaded. But I think I, I would like to belong to the category of persuades, not to be persuaded. So I want to welcome you on behalf of the University of your community to this end of the month tonic. We are here the last minutes of last month, and we are here again. So I welcome you, and I know you will learn, I don't want to say one or two things, you will learn more today. You will know that English has meditation. You know that we have English today, you will know. So with that, it's my pleasure to declare this event open. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much for the inaugural lecture of this great university, who spoke on the topic mainstreaming developments, communication for national developments. He is from the Department of Communication Arts, Faculty of Arts. It's my pleasure to bring to the podium Professor Ashok C. Ashok. This the Vice Chancellor, sir. Because I don't like making too many mistakes, I believe that have been allowed to adopt the protocol so well established already, so I don't offend anybody. So, Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 34 years ago, I had the privilege of teaching a young man. Today, that young man is my boss.
rain descended in torrents, as though the heavens were in a pitch to discharge their cash of pent up vessels. As the day broke in the idyllic countryside of Ubororo, the state silence of one household in the community was shattered by the shrill cry of a newborn baby. The boy's father, momentarily jettisoning the customary sedateness and solemnity of his ecclesiastical mien, danced in it as he carried the boy in his arms, yodeling a delighted hallelujah to God. On her part, the baby's mother was understandably overjoyed at the arrival of her second male child, having previously birthed three girls and a boy. The day was Thursday, September 26, 1965. The proud father was Pastor Dr. Asufo Esu of the Edo Esu family, the genteel kindred of the Yo and Obiyong Kweg in Oboro, the tranquil community in what is now known as Rotom local government area of Bible State. Known among his friends and pastoral flock as a Sumbakara on account of his eloquence in the English language and his frequent evangelistic trips abroad, Pastor Dr. Oko Esu was the celebrated clergyman of the Apostolic Church in Nigeria. A minister who, along with the late Pastor E. D. Okon, traversed the length and breadth of Nigeria, Cameroon, and several countries of the Western world in furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The baby's mother, a beautiful and devout woman, renowned for her industriousness and hospitality, was deaconess Mrs. Akon Akonisu, me, Akon Ben, Ayo, Ayo, Okoye. Located in the roof of, you will forgive me, won't you? <laughs> Located in the roof of uh, Reform Rupa. The baby, a charming bond of name and diversity, was Christian Peter, after the prominent apostle of Christ, but his mother called him Mfon, translated Peter of Grace. The child was further Christian Okoata by his paternal great grandfather <laughs> of the family. <laughs> <And> the <laughs> Chief Alebe Yesu, of course, at home, who named him after the progenitor and patriarch of the Oko family of the old Oron Oko government area. Chief Okoata predicted that the newborn baby would grow to become the father of all. The plan. A winner who would organize the family and protect the above lineage. The baby's paternal grandmother, who hailed originally from Nebu in what is now Mbo local government area of Akwaiwan State, named the child Oyomonuse, Oyomonuse, meaning Oyomonuse, meaning. If this child were a piece of cloth, I would put it in a box and bring it out only occasionally to display it to the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that multi appellation baby is the erudite scholar now standing before us, Peter Asuko. <laughs> Childhood for Peter Esu was an environment of love and warmth in the care of his affectionate parents and the embrace of the various Christian congregations over which his father superintended in the course of his ministerial travels. By the time the young Peter came of school age, his father was serving in Western Calabar in the old Crossroads States. Peter was constantly enrolled in the Presbyterian Primary School of Omitiat, at the East in Western Calabar. There, he obtained his first school living certificate 
but not before some hair-raising adventures. Living in a community surrounded by forest and thick vegetation, the young Peter had become an amorphous. He simply could not resist the urge to explore the forest, not minding what they just took there. Eventually, one day, in the company of his classmates, deep into the forest of Akan by the Portuguese state, Peter lost contact with his friends and became isolated. To worsen the precarious situation, he happened on some wild animals, which promptly gave him a pot chase. Providentially, he somehow managed to escape. That incident will save the man he will grow up to be a courageous adventurer, but one who is loved at each hazardous turn by the hand of God. A precocious child from birth, Peter graduated from primary school as the best pupil in his class and gave admission in 1977 to one of the outstanding secondary schools in these parts of Nigeria at that time, the Methodist Boys High School, Oron. By this time, the young Peter was well known among his peers, not only for his scholastic potential, but also for his impetuousness. He had an impressive energy about him, and seemed that his father was determined to turn him into both of engagements. Consequently, Peter was enrolled in the prayer plan of the Apostolic Church at the age of seven, and by ten was already a perennial champion at some school examinations and Bible quizzes. He joined the day club in each of the schools he attended, as well as the Red Cross Society at Methodist Boys High School. This upbringing also inculcated in him the attributes of religiousness and cordiality owing to the fact that his childhood home was always host to a gathering of children, juveniles sent from underprivileged homes to live with a pastor, children bequeathed to God in redemption of vows, motherless babies gladly adopted by the pastoral family, it is it. In any case, that household never had fewer than 40 children at any given time. Somebody is a witness there. Yes. As he grew, Peter developed a national predilection for fighting injustice. That hankering for egalitarianism seemed to lead him inexorably to a fondness for the legal profession. By the time he reached his final year in secondary school, he had made up his mind for pursuing a career in law. Then the family received an august visitor. Pastor Ali Wade Oko fondly called a comrade great father, but the apostolic church faithful was a bosom friend of and co neighbor with the young father's, young Peter's father, Pastor Dr. Asu Boisu. Pastor Kohn was later to become the first indigenous president and third overall national president of the apostolic church in Nigeria. On one of his visits to the Asu family, Pastor Kuhn asked what Udoa Sumbakara intended to study. He was told that the boy wished to become a lawyer. To this, the venerable clergyman shook his head and said, never, adding that God has other plans for him. Shortly after this prophetic pronouncement, the boy's ordinary level school certificate examination results did, which had been Inexplicably missing was found lying on Main Avenue Parva in an envelope addressed to Pastor Suho Tomisu. Nonetheless, the young Su was then on studying law and he tilted his efforts in that direction. He proceeded to the Crossing State School of Basic Studies at Kanpak, where from 1985 to 1987 he studied sociology, religion, and literature at the advanced level. Upon completion of his course of studies, he applied to the University of Benin at the University of Crossing State to study law. He was offered provisional admission in both institutions to pursue his dreams. His mother, however, was against the idea of leaving home for Benin. He therefore left joyfully for Wio, having been notified of his admission. Alas, 
on reaching the campus of the University of Washington State. He discovered that his name on the admissions list for the Faculty of Law had been neatly crossed out with a black pen. He discovered to his chagrin that he had no permission to pay fees and no subsisting offer of admission. Dejected, he returned home to his father, who promptly took him to a certain professor in London of Gordon at the university. The distinguished professor, God bless his soul, sent a note to Professor Herbert uh, Westerner, who was dean of the Faculty of Arts at that time. Professor Herbert demurred on the admission request, noting that it came in, it, it came in the middle of the semester when students were then expected to be taking their preliminary examinations. However, Professor Cohn persisted and after some further weeks of delay, the lab was admitted in the Department of Communication Arts, a fortnight before the mid-semester examinations. At the end of the first semester, the late common earned an average, a great point average of 4.20 out of 5 emerging as one of the best students in the class. <laughs> when the time to write his final year's research report came in 1990, a young scholar chose a topic that dealt with sales promotion as an aspect of marketing communications. Little did he know that it was laying the foundation for his future scholar, scholarly endeavors and ultimately for his professorial chair. In the course of time, he went on to acquire a Master of Arts degree in Mass Communication from the University of Rio, graduating with distinction and a cumulative average of 4.87. <laughs> Upon completion of his MA program, Peter Esso was retained as, a, as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Communication at the University of Rio in 1996. I guess it doesn't like cool. In addition, he has attended conferences in Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Malaysia, the United States of America, Turkey, Egypt, Israel, and Cyprus. His work experience within the University of Ohio includes a long list of offices and may not mention all. But he has supervised some 26 Master of Arts dissertations and about 20 doctoral thesis. He has been engaged in curriculum development for the diploma, bachelor's degree, and postgraduate programs of the Department of Communication Arts. And in fact, it is instructive that it is in his time as head of department that the curriculum for the department, sorry, of the Faculty of Communication and Media Studies came on board. He's been a member of the University Fundraising Committee, head production team to the first university's research fair in Abuja in 2005, founding president, graduate students association, GRASA of the University of Rio in 1991. He's been editor of Innovation, which is a journal of the Postgraduate School University of Rio. He's been patron and academic advisor of study Student Fellowship of Nigeria, University of Rio Chapter. He's been founding president of the University of Rio Campus Lions Club, member of the University Publicity Committee. He's been the University of Rio orator 2004 to 2008. He's been secretary of the Faculty of Arts International Conference Committee, Department of Examinations Officer, Departmental Research Project Coordinator, Coordinator BA Program School of Continuing Education, and Head of Department 2020. Currently still there. Professor Su has served the following capacities outside in other universities. He's been the visiting associate professor of mass communication at the Nigeria University in 2007. He's been professor of mass communication at the Nigeria University, visiting professor, sorry, of mass communication at the Nigeria University in 2010. Visiting Professor of Mass Communication, Nasarawa State University, Kelly, 2013, adjunct lecturer at the State University through 
referred from 1997 to 1999. Adjunct lecturer MBA program in public relations and advertising in Ebola State University of Nigeria, 1998-1999. Adjunct senior lecturer across the United States University of Technology, Calabar, Nigeria, 2005 2008. He's been Visiting Associate Professor of Public Relations and Marketing Communications, St. Augustine University of Tanzania, 2008-2009. He's been Visiting Associate Professor of Public Relations, Moy University, Kenya, 2008-2009. He's been Visiting Scholar Marketing Communications, the rest of Business School, Tanzania, 2009. He's been a Examiner at the State University of Academy in Nigeria, 2014 to date, external examiner, University of Bini, in UCC 2017 to date, external assessor, Lagos State University of York, University of Lagos, Akoka, Lagos, and Venice State University in Macquarie. Mm -hmm. Apart from the achievements in the academia, Professor of School has proved his method in many capacities in the Nigerian public service, in governance, and in politics generally. He has served in state and country in the following capacities. He a member of the City Subcommittee Victor Attack Campaign Organization in 2003, Director of the City Johnson Stan Campaign Organization 2002 to 2003, Editor of Voice of Forum 2003 to 2007, State Secretary of Passenger Solidarity Forum 2005 to 2007. The list is very long. So please, permit me to skip the rest of it. Otherwise, you will not listen to him, Professor. He's also been a member of several professional bodies. The following is a passionate vision of such affiliations. He's been a member of the National Association for Research and Development, member of the Advertising Practitioners, Council of Nigeria, member of the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, member of the Council for Communication and Education, member of the National Society for Development and Sustainability, fellow Institute of Industrial Administration, fellow Institute of Corporate Administration of Nigeria, member of the European Center for Training and Development, United Kingdom, member of the African Rhetorical Society, Job of South Africa, Member of the National Society for Sustainable Development of Japan. Professor Su has received a number of awards, awards, some of which I will mention. He's been the best English literature student. He received the best English literature student at Award School of Basic Studies in 1987. Award of Academic Excellence, National Association of Foreign Students in 2001. Award of Academic Excellence Department of Communication as in 2006. Award of Excellence in Human Development, Sports Team Impact Magazine in 2013. 50th Anniversary Distinguished Speaker Award, Lions Club International in 2014. It was cited in Who in School in Nigeria, third edition 2005. Cited in Achievers Who School in Nigeria in 2010. Cited in Who's Who in Aquarium State Silver Jubilee Edition 2012, Aquarium State Personality of the Year Award, Applause Magazine 2013, Award of Excellence for this boys' high school around 2019, Award of Academic Excellence and Mentorship for two of our students at Aquarium State University 2019, Academic Merit Award from Students of Aquarium State Polytechnic 2019. Distinguished Academic Influencer Award, Michael Bush Jordan Jubilee 2021. Life Honor Award, I think we are all. Our core of students worldwide 2021. And Academic Excellence Award, Association of Communication as it is 2021. Professor Sue is not all work. He is happily married to his actor, a loving and gorgeous young lady named Mrs. Emerald Peter Sue. The marriage is blessed with comfort, person, Christy, Alcrystal, Empress, and Gabriela. 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The British statesman Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill once said that there is no power as great as pleasure. Caesar, he said, controlled people by exciting their fears, and Cicero by swaying their passions. The political influence of Caesar Churchill noted had perished soon after his demise, but Cicero's radical influence continues to this day. Today, we are gathered to listen to someone who has studied and mastered the radical lessons taught by the Cicero's the Aristotle's, the Demosthenes, the Seneca's, Winston Churchill's, the Abraham Lincoln's, Martin Luther King's of this world. In the course of the day, we will probably learn a thing or two about virtue, origin, and marketing communications, and perhaps acquire some knowledge that will help us exert influence alone long after we have left the world, just as Cicero did. The Vice Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, in the hope of benefiting from this wellspring of rhetorical knowledge and skills, I present to you an internationally celebrated scholar of return, a highly gifted public speaker, a distinguished professor of marketing communications, and applied in Turin in, and the 86th inaugural lecturer for the University of New York, Professor Peter.
wonderful part, who traversed this road to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a disciplinary. He said, whatever I am today, and the product of that, and I submit to the Spirit, because it is responsible for whatever I am today. God promised him things, and God did it for me. I always believe that I exude very classical the blessings that I proceeded from his services to the Lord God Almighty. And I know that he is in the church of my own life, and I salute his spirit for being my father and the father of my other siblings. I have a mother who taught me that when you have food, give it to people. Do not hesitate to do it. That food is less bitter. Why should you deny people something that at the end of the day you will want it and you will become a business? She brought up 14 children to this world. And she took care of our kids. And the impact of us, those children are seated. And then God gave me wonderful students who grew up, we had adventures, disputes, interests, and solidarity. Especially my elder, eldest brother, Elder Okun, as a poor woman, and my elder brother, Elder Emmanuel, as a poor woman. My other siblings got to bless me some. The first one, Nicholas Gladys Smith, in the Nelly School, got to mind the economy, the beloved school, Pastor Friday School, Mr. Victor School, Mr. Richard School, Captain Jaffa School, the Mercy School. And engineer Joseph. Thank you very much for sharing this in Father and Mother with me. And thank you because of every stage of my training came from my friends and you. I can't forget my two elder brothers who taught me how to make motors from the steel of bamboo and then we used to ride it around and ride around and ride the ride around. God sent me to a great and wonderful village. Uburon, I want Professor Ashon, Ashon to know that the name of my village is Uburon. <laughs> I cannot forget you, my people. My uncle, the Paranormal Ruler, is here. You encouraged me to keep the village flat high. You stood by me during my campaign time to become the governor of Akwai State. My uncle, the Paranormal Ruler, declared a three day fast, and everyone in my village sought the days of the Lord. I want to tell my uncle and the great people of Oberon, dreams are necessary for visions to be fulfilled. <laughs> when the Oberon Strategic Committee, led by Saudu Kanante and Chidi Aishan, my uncle, for the commitment towards an accessory and necessity of the sons and daughters of Oberon. I'm also a son of Oberon Nation. The people of Oron, from my local government area of Oron Mundo to Okopo, to Oron Mundo, to Mundo, and the Oron Union, the umbrella position of the Oron people, the Oron Intern, they will be for Mundo. And in fact, the Itan Bakor, to which I am the chairman, I want to thank you for standing by me and making sure that God keeps us going on to carry the flag of the race of the people that no matter the level of subjugation and marginalization, the hope of the marginalized will be become. <laughs> now to my teachers, great and wonderful teachers God has given to me. I ask my secondary school teacher to be here, I don't know if he is here. I want to specifically thank Professor Desmond Wilson. <laughs> Professor Desmond Wilson, thank you for searching out for merit. You found merit in me, and you gave me the pedestal to become a lecturer. I remember in my master's degree in 1993, when Professor Eugene Sinclair gave me, and after the external examination, he insisted that this boy 
must only lead to University of Ibadan to teach them. I will help you by the chair of the former postgraduate school as telling me can't do things stay in you. And then I will, I will help you when you said to him that the Department of Communication Arts had requested for his services from the then Vice Chancellor Professor Polar Assistant. Today, whatever I am today, if you did not intercede in that process, I wouldn't be standing. Professor Desmond Remember that you took me to the communication world globally. Remember they used to call you and I the blue mafia or whatever you were. You were an academic man. You taught me how to be an academic man. And together we traversed, and no one could dump the spirit. Once again, thank you, sir. I salute the great spirit of Professor Isin Bong in way of blessed memory. I have the opportunity, I have a job of 22,000 naira to latest as a title. I was prepared for the job. But when the appointment came, my salary was 3,200 naira. And I said, I needed to make some good money so that I can also take care of people. It was the Professor Isin Bong in way who called me and told me, Peter, when God gives people your honor, this is not for selfish reasons. He gives you so that you can bring up other human beings. It was at that point that I took a decision to let go money and put up my own bit of service to humanity by bringing others to the <laughs> Professor Mungo, I cannot forget your American sport and the way you were encouraging me. To Professor Carol Walker, here stands that boy whose PhD was your first in Spanish at the end of the defense who confessed that this boy can stand anywhere in the world. That prophecy came to be. And I have been able to stand anywhere in the world that God will be my Thank you, Professor. You know, I happen to have been the person who I see of Professor Desmond Wilson, and I also happen to have been the person who I see of Professor Carol Wilson. But I have the privilege of being taught by great men, wonderful teachers, some who universal squad that you cannot find anymore. And they still carry that squad even as they sit in the formation. I see them smiling, and I know I'm a product of the composition and enigma of the combination of all this great giant to life infused to me the capacity to stand before giants and spirit. They include and not limited to Professor Lope of the GNSD, I hope you still remember this. Professor Joe Chair of the GNSD, Professor Asham Asham, and Associate Professor Chris Egara, and Professor Wemeni Mwakako, and Professor Elion Chancellor. Professor Chris Mwam, God bless you. Thank you. And I will not forget one Dr. Hesse, who taught me in two basic studies, and he told me this no education. Is a waste. I want to thank Dr. Carlos about that, who transited some money system, who was my first project supervisor, and he encouraged me to venture into marketing communications against the challenges I had. He understood me, but at that stage, I think we were not ready yet to embrace the concept, the process, and the procedures, the theories, and models of marketing communications. Professor Fulala Sisi, wherever you are, sir, I greet you. Thank you for giving me the appointment to become a lecturer. Professor Akman Hogan Ebo, thank you for believing in me and trusting me with a lot of responsibilities in the University of Europe. Professor Ugoetu, I thank you because as an active vice chancellor, you were the first person who wrote commendation letter to me for my services to this great university. Professor Akman Hogan you gave me consent to leave the university to other places to go and teach. And it wasn't without professor of particular guarantee that I will return to the university. So Professor Pompoteco has a lot to do with me, and I thank you, Professor Pompoteco. My position to the poor position of our associate professor came in after six years under the reign of Professor Pompoteco. And I got announced as a professor in the years of Professor Enefio. This year, the Bachelor's.
professor Yalino Ndai, it is your time that I became the head of the department. <laughs> professor Yalino Ndai, it is your time that the Faculty of Communication and <laughs> I believe God will use you to accomplish the nominal greatness for this country. I thank you. I was talking to my excellency, and I know my colleagues are here. They're both Samson and the rest of the world. The national dance said, I said, I hear you. And uh, uh, the political class, my then campaign organization, the G22 family, the GE, the oral thing time. It was another kind of experience. And I can't forget his excellence, Bernardo Gabriel Emmanuel, for asking me to work with him to see how we can lead this day forward under the Akata Creek. Thank you for trusting me with the responsibility of the board chairman. To the College of Board Chairmen and Commissions led by our Kunu, thank you, dear colleagues, for working together to integrate and implement the vision of our government to move this to I should not forget to thank the Ibudus in all, including Ibudu Fiona Ferrer, Ibudu Donosom, Chief Dr. Fiona Duna, Matita with Peter Fiona, Chief Jerry Fiona. You know, interacting with them politically gave me a different dimension to human interaction and existence. I have brothers around me, but I have to acknowledge the patriotism of the great oral son, Ambassador Dr. Robert in Uye. I have brothers from other lands, from different local government areas in the state. Engineer Billet, Saeed and Fabio, Father of Michael Bush, who happened to be the chairman of the Organizing Committee of Disciplines, Dr. Agnese John Perry. Thank you, my brother. And to this gentleman, I'm not sure I took time to write this work, Mr. Dayton Lippon, on Chris Lippon. God bless you. To my colleagues in the department, professors are shown in the young Wapan or both. Doctors in Panama, um, Professor of Mamara Letters, Raspal, Fabio, Nedley, Senan, Samson, Dario, Mrs. Sitaiko, Nabasi Fredidio, Idori Ekanen, Panama, Ms. Charity Pan, and Ms. Edidio Mamara. God bless you all. But I have to single out two people of that department. Doctor Nsika Idio, the second <laughs> Thank you. 
give the teacher. It's a privilege to teach them. As well as it is a privilege for them to see you as a teacher. That is why when you stand in front of them, with all humility, the Bible says, reckon that someone is better than you. To all start of students of the International Institute of Journalism, the people the board and council of the Apostolic Church Theological Seminary, the staff and non-teaching staff of the Department of Communication, the leaders and the that they quickly say that to comfort, gossip, Christian, Elders, Empress, Gabriella, I could not have asked for more. And to the wife that God has been with me. Thank you so much for understanding me and standing up. Now let me thank the persons in my department who set the stage ahead of me in the inaugural lectures. The first, Professor Emmanuel Adam, 1994. The title, Entropy, Redundancy and Meaning Share. The second, Professor Desmond Wilson, 2015, Ethnic Communicology, Child Modern Communication and Metamorphosis in Nigeria. And I come across the mystification of the communication. <laughs> the third, Professor Gerwem Udoha, 2017, The Political Economy of Nigerian Journalism. And just uh, recently, about two or three months ago, Professor Ashon Clifford. <laughs> and extreme development communication for national development. Today, the process continues. You know what? Because communication is a process of processes. <laughs> and we are working on that. The road to marketing communication is not bad that you've been captured by the man who read my citation, and he had tried to show a whole lot of things that happened to me in my attempt to be a lawyer, and then I ended up becoming what I am today. And to the glory of God, wherever Professor Alan Herbert is the Lord bless his soul. Because when then Dr. Then Professor Emmanuel Akwan said there was no chance of the performing, he kept insisting. Dr. Emmanuel Akwan, I say, admit. Look at credentials. Admit. And at the point when Professor Emmanuel Akwan said this boy, he said to my mother, this boy can now get the two weeks to be smashed like that in no way. My father said to me, Peter, let's go back to the house. When you go kneel down and pray, I will kneel the man out of the house and pray. And when we finish praying, let me tell you this. The Spirit of the Lord tells me that is where you will belong and that's where you will profess. On Monday, go back and start school. I was born when pastors were pastors. And you still have responsibility for one of the And so when I appeared on the board of the Department of Communication Arts, the seat I now occupy as the head of the department, though the department limits me of Professor Yawodo Dali. Professor Emmanuel Dali. If we were queuing, when he saw me, he shouted, Are you the pastor's son? Are you the pastor's son? I said, Yes, sir. He said, My friend wants that school to be like faith. He said, like, ah, That's not my business. What kind of father do you have? Every night you have the weekend, every time I close my eyes, he will appear with a follow on his head. I said, How are you doing that vision? Precious to the Lord God Almighty. Also, I got admitted into the Department of Communication Arts, a most dynamic discipline on the surface of the earth. <laughs> when Prophet goes out and says, Man can now not communicate, <laughs> and Professor Jasperson will say, Communicate or error. There is no discipline on the surface of the earth that does not have the pain of the community. Because in the beginning, Genesis chapter number one, verse one, of the Lord say, God say, and each time God say things happen. And then when we get to St. John's Gospel from chapter number one, uh, verse one to eight, we say, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It says, everything is done by the word. Without the word, nothing is done. So even if you are a Without communication, surely you will perish. And even after dying, Professor Wilson would 
tell you we'll have another form of communication on exercise. <laughs> Messages 
continuously and simultaneously multiply in, in the transaction world. And that communication events are past, present, and future. And that participants play a certain role in the message of the So I made an attempt to present the marketing communications model because unlike communication, all these models pay attention to the source. Designing message, sending the message, the receiver responding, marketing experts believing that and persuasive actors believing that when you create a message and send, someone must respond. No, it doesn't work like that. So what is the model? I'm just starting the communication situation. I discovered that in marketing communication, the opposite is the case. So I designed the model on that board, and that in that model, communication in marketing communication does not start with the source. It starts with the receiver. And who is the receiver? The best, great person. Now, when you look at that, you will see that we are governed by tribes, biogenic tribes, psychographic tribes, and environmental tribes. These tribes create motives to which we desire things and want things. And so, marketing communication experts and marketers must first identify, they must listen, they must listen, they must interact, they must do for marketing intelligence. And in the process, who do they need? They need the receiver. So I am the first person to talk to them. It is when I finish talking to them that I have an idea of what products to design. And after designing, they now send it back to me. So it is actually an interaction running to and the program. Starting now with the source. Starting this day and this day with the receiver. And running down to the source to which you have a product idea. And then from the product idea, product appeals are created. And after product appeals are created, message appeals are then created and sent back to the receiver. Who will send back feedback whether or not the product was good or not? Back to the source. Even though we have all the nine elements of communication present, this process is an anti in clockwise direction to the norms of the processes of human communication. So the gathering of intelligence from consumers, suppliers, distributors, community agencies, government agencies, etc. The entire flow of data between and among personnel, the flow of information and persuasion from organizations, customers, potential customers and suppliers form the basis to which the receiver becomes the principal actor in marketing communication. However, as I said, the element of context, seller, input, message, channel, medium, receiver, decoder, feedback, and noise as found in the normal communication process is involved in marketing communication. So, but the question is, people always confuse marketing communication with promotions. Professor Paul Wilson Thomas, who actually prompted me into this area of specialty, has done a great work with Professor Thompson separately to identify that promotion is a one way, a unidirectional linear process of persuasion. That he who promotes has just the purpose. That purpose is to persuade him to get what he wants. But in marketing communication, he who persuades engages in a dialogue. So the difference is that in marketing communication, we design the conceptual processes and tools to create dialogue between the marketer or the manufacturer and the receiver. So promotion is also mostly a persuasive process, and it is used to persuade the public to buy, and sometimes what they do not want to buy. So we should know that it is not easy to sell something people do not want to buy. It is only in Nigeria that you can sell a bad product more than once. In marketing management, we say that you can sell a product only once. After that, what we call dissonance, cognitive dissonance, will set in. And the person, the consumer, will begin to sell the dollars before information. But in Nigeria, anything goes. And I pray God that the time will come in political sphere, in product circle, in idea and classes and places that will begin to know that you can only market a bad product once. If you have someone that you voted for because it is a political product and he has not performed well, you don't need to repeat him. If you repeat him, you are against the bad thing myself, that you can only sell a bad product how many times? Once. Now, what are the various elements of marketing communications? 
I have identified about 22. If you look at textbooks, you will see about six or seven or nine. But in my study of marketing communication as a lead scholar, I've been doing a lot of work. The principal tools are number one, advertising, time will not permit me. Number two, sales promotion. Number three, direct marketing. Number four, email campaigns. Number five, newsletters. Number six, personal selling. Number seven, public relations. Number eight, social media. Number nine, publicity. Number ten, catalog. Number eleven, trade shows. Number twelve, seminar. Number thirteen, webinars. Fourteen, forums. 15 surveys, number 16 mobile applications, number 17 sponsorship, number 18 podcasts, number 19 interactive markets to event based marketing, and number 20 propaganda. Most people don't know that propaganda is one of the most powerful tools of marketing communication. But what are the offers? In marketing, you say we give products. In marketing communications, we say we give offering. The offering must have utility. What you actually buy, what you pay for, whether it's a political candidate or a product or a place, what you pay for is not that product. What you spend money on is satisfaction. You want to be satisfied. So you are spending money on utility. And if that utility does not stand the taste of what you spend money on, it will begin to suffer this illness. And when you suffer this event, it will be very difficult for you to be convinced to go to buy that program. So now, what are the offerings? Number one, books, general consumer products. Number two, services like hotels, like rental firms, beautification, warriors do that, accountants do that. Then events. You know, if you manage one or two events in your life that is big in the world, you could eat for one year without something. And then you have um, experience. We market experience, and we market places, we market persons, we market properties, we market organizations, we market information, we market ideas, and we make sure that all of them must go through the processes of understanding persuasion. Now what is persuasion? Persuasion is a communication process in which the sender intends to exert influence and the respondent makes choices voluntarily, voluntarily. So persuasion is anti-thesis to the rhetoric of cohesion and the rhetoric of the young. We will get it. Now, as a behavioral phenomenon, you could see that you could get all the ingredients to understand persuasion from psychology and topology, group dynamics, cybernetics, and communication. However, persuasion is said earlier, is said earlier as a communication process. It requires a minimum of two persons for you to exert persuasion. Attempting to affect attitude in the interaction of the other person is far more than one person. To do this, persuasion depends on the verbal and non-verbal messages divided by participants, encoded and transmitted or decoded. In sum, all the non-components of human communication are involved in the process of persuasion. Every intentional communication has the content of persuasion. Now, so what do we do? There are three four classification of persuasive situations. Number one, some form of persuasion is essentially unidirectional. Number two, some persuasion are bi-directional and some are multi-directional. As you know, time will not permit me, but I've taken time in this work to spend that so when you have a copy of it, you can go back and take the time to it. As a follow-up on this, persuasion is better understood from its three-fold model. I've spent the etymatic model, the motivational model, and the consistency model. Again, I have presented Thompson 1975 schema of the three-fold model of persuasion. And no matter whether these behavioral changes occur, as an honor of communication, there is properly level of persuasion in the center as the intention of producing change. Smith has also provided the persuasion methods to which he has identified dependent variables and independent variables that are needed in the persuasion process. All of you here have seen the word rhetoric, rhetorical, and you said, what is it? 
Aristotle took time to explain that rhetoric is an art of discovery in any particular case all the available means of persuasion. What does that mean? It means that no persuasive situation and no rhetorical situation, no two rhetorical situations are the same. That is to sit in convincing Mr. A today it doesn't mean that in the same way that you will come in. You know, in Nigeria, if you go to a young lady and you give her the rose flower, you know what she will tell you? My flower is your child. <laughs> then you put that out before an American lady, she is crazily, crazily satisfied. And she will be perceived, she might even delete her people for you, and she might twist her tongue in exasperation of the evil sense of the law that you're providing to the person. That's an aspect of persuasion. Identifying in any particular case all the available means of persuasion. That's just one question. Now, this study started about 3000 BC when Tar Hotter had to design a pathway to teach the son of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh and his son had to be taught how to speak. In the ancient days, there was no law. What was in existence was rhetoric. Aristocrates had to be engaged to go and stand and defend the public before the government of Greece that had taken their property. And so it is from rhetoric and rhetorical communication that the birth of what we call law exuded. And when we look at people like Plato, Socrates, Isocrates, Quintilianus, Aristotle, Cicero, and Cincinnati, and Cincinnati, you will find out that all of them have projected the concept of the theory of enmity, that general discourses must have a central one. And so from the central one, you will dissolve the, and bring out what we call the Tupor, the line of and so when you bring out the line of argument with regard to Paul, you now move into the establishment of the warrant, the presentation of the data, and the provision of claims. So you cannot easily make claims. And this is what has led to the dissection of syllogism into the joint syllogism and other aspects of syllogism as we have come to see. The application of rhetoric in marketing communication, especially advertising, is better with two through the techniques of proper language over figurative language. Now, what I have done is to take uh, the Bokian Penta, take the vast two levels of rhetorical manipulations, which we call the metabolas and the paracasis, and then take the plural identifications of the elements of rhetorical figures, which we call, which, which we call the mode of oppression and the mode of substitution. And I brought them out to study marketing communications and advertising in Nigeria. What did I do? The first was to look at figures of addition. And the rhetorical devices here in the please, if you don't understand this, you can consult me. One of the reasons we stand here is that at the end of the day, both the town and government will have to consult us for what they do not understand. And you pay fees. It is not only lawyers and accountants and all those other professors. Professors also have the capacity to charge fees. Knowledge that is learned is not free. And so if you don't understand any of these things, please do kindly find time to consult. Now, number one is uh, similarity, repetition, multiple repetition, accumulation, opposition, double meaning, and paradox. Number two is figure of substitution. These are used in marketing communication. These include reality, second locution, suspension, pathology, and preterism. Number four, identical substitution of object, hyperbole, lethal, meiosis, substitution of similar elements, substitution of different elements, metonymy, synodoke, metaphor, substitution of elements in permission, antonomasia, and formal homology. Figures of exchange. To which we exchange one idea in a situation, even in a script or the norm, that includes inversion, endiaries, homology, ascendant, anachronism, chasmus, anti metabol, and oxymoron. 
Now, what did I do? I put up the table to show the difference between paratrasis and metabolism. So, in my study of the marketing communication situation in Nigeria in 2001, especially using the advertising uh, context of the Nigerian practice, I use the following. I use the ethical proof as provided by a risk model. I use the pathetic proof. I use the logical proof at two levels, the artistic and the analytic. I also use the rhetorical certification to establish meaning. And I also use persuasive synergy to see how the different elements synchronize to generate persuasion. I also use the canon of delivery and as units of analysis, this canon include the exodium, the perversion, the partition, the confirmation, the Probation and the computational and reprehensional and the peroration. Now, the findings I got are listed here, but I'll just take one. That the dominant referral figure used by Nigerian advertisers in the copy study was metaphor. Others were repetition, hyperbole, and determined. These figures were used to create emphasis. Try on the sales messages. Persuade prospects to patronize the outlets. Uh, as I said, there were a lot of them and you will need to go through this work to understand that. Now, in all, an assessment of 1999 television advertisement of the two civilizations in Western Europe and the United States and then UK, we found that the dominant thing they used was digression. So you see elements come in and play on screen, and you don't know the direction it goes until they land on the product. So you now go, oh, so it was a product, this product they were talking about. Now, that writing itself cannot do the work of persuading the persuaders. You must combine the art of discovery in every particular case, all the available means of persuasion with semiotics. And so, symmetric relevance becomes very important. Symmetric is simply the study of signs and symbols, and their use or interpretation. And so, they are, it is divided into three basic segments. Number one is syntactic, that's the relationship between signs. Number two is pragmatic, the relationship between signs and their users. Number three is semantic, the relationship between signs and their reference. The most important purpose of symmetric is the study of symbiosis. That is the formation and comprehension of science. Semiosis can be studied in both human and non-human fields. The difference in human and animal and plant communication is that while human beings store symbols, animals and plants don't store symbols. Animals communicate. Plants also communicate. In the study of plant communication, what you will find is this plant called touch me now. When you touch one, he sends signals to the rest of them, telling them of the danger that is ahead. And they begin to pull, right, the pull that's synchronizing the system, and then the closing to make sure that they are weak away from danger. That's his plan of And for the sciences, we were taught about the cosmosis. And we were also taught about the geotropism and geotropism. Indicating the movement of plants towards the direction of the sun. They communicate, they take their signal and they move towards the signal. So even when you see in our own traditional system, when you want to plant coconut, they say sit down and plant so that it will not grow tall. Find out when you start to plant coconut in two, three years or there, it will grow taller than you. And when you squat to plant coconut, it will stabilize at a certain level. And then when coconut begins, these are studies that I would like those in scientists to go in and check. And then when you when you look at that, some coconut will not bear through the fruits. They may stay like that for ages without bearing fruit. And when they start bearing fruits, they begin to drop the fruits. And you will hear an older person in the family saying, hey, go and look for the grandchild. Tell that grandchild to carry the root and tie it around the coconut and speak to the coconut. And when that happens, the fruits will reduce to fall and the coconut will match you. That is because they are all people the life. Now science has not been able to discover this, the, 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 the intrigue 
for higher plants communication. Plants communicate. Animals communicate. My own former professor, Professor Emmanuel Lapa, in an argument with me, told me that animals are not spouse symbols. One day I sat for in my house that Professor Wilson used to visit at MLA. And I sat there and I saw a hen and a cock. The first thing I saw was the hen. The hen came around, not the cock came around, and did the apartment scratching on the ground. I was watching. Then the hen appeared. The hen that had children, the moment that hen saw the apartment scratching, she ran away with the children. But the hen that wanted to be laid, the moment that hen came and saw the partner scratching, that hen did not leave that point. She hovered around that point until the cock arrived and took the Uh, 
big to that, like that, to this, that's their culture. And if they are generating advertisement for that product, it will be based on their culture. The marketing communications and advertisement, for instance, will generate what we call icons, send lines. And these send lines are based on signs. And these signs must have two levels of relationship. Number one is called indexical relationship. That what you see as sign or icon will directly reflect what it should stand for. You say, hello, oh, are you married? You see young women, we wear rings on this finger and we banging it around. When you go to the Scandinavian countries and you wear a ring on your second finger on your left hand, they will be doing what we call chiding. All the men will follow you because to them, that is a fashion thing. They are wearing fashion. It's better that the ring is a signifier of what? Is a signifier of what? So the ring now stands for marriage. And what does it signify? That this woman is not free. And so from there, another sign relationship, which is symbolic relationship, is established. And from the symbolic relationship, we have two levels of connotations. We have the connotation of the first level, and then we have the connotations of the connotators. And now each of these connotations of the connotators cannot stand on its own, because it must be derived from symptomatic and paradigmatic sign relations. You feel? So from cultural mean ideology relationship, wants that we have, needs that we have, desires, and all the needs are translated into rulers. Not just like this, you wear this. It is someone's idea. That idea is based on interaction from the first persuader. And so when people come to persuade us, they don't think that we are the best persuaders. When politicians come to read my role with their beautiful languages, they do not know that the people they are talking to are in themselves persuaders with what we call the black box syndrome. And so when you come to me, my filters that are generated from culture, previous experiences are not are waiting for you. And so when you begin to talk, it is only in Nigeria that politics and benefits have covered our eyes. But the time has come and is fast approaching. When those who will stand before us will recognize that they who are trying to persuade us are meeting superior persuaders. And when that time comes, they will find it difficult to persuade us. Because in Anambra State, the last election in Anambra State, that has been extreme. Women in one community rejected money. They could only listen to what was said and they passed that vote. That time is far too close. And I believe with the direct primary is coming up, things will not be the same. The next is, in persuading the persuader, it is important to note from my model of marketing communication process that the receiver is the main essence of persuasion. When you pull out the receiver, there is no persuasion. Moreover, that the consonant with the fact that the receiver is an information and communication processing agent is very important. Because the belief system, the cultural values, the biogenic drive, the psychographic drive, and the environmental drive all make the person that you are persuading with it, not as a target, but as someone who is well versed in the art of persuasion. The consumer is at first the person wanting to be persuaded. Mostly in dissonant situations, is even the consumer that goes around for information. The reason most marketing communication messages and campaigns are designed to build is from the lack of training in the art of persuasion. The whole and craft of rhetoric and ideological processes of signification based on semantic applications of signs, icons, and symbolic conventions are needed for you to understand how to persuade the persuaders. In what I call the Lucifer Serpent Model, Hello. <laughs> Professional persuaders must obey the Aristotelian doctrine of finding in any particular case all the available means of persuasion. This model, the Lucifer Serpent model, advanced by me, 
depict the subtleness of Lucifer. Lucifer's target was not Eve. Lucifer's target was Adam. But Lucifer has to pass to Adam. So Lucifer has to discover in every particular case all the available means of persuasion. And so Lucifer had to date a brand new ambassador. And the brand new ambassador is called the same. from Genesis chapter 3, where from verse 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of the every tree of the garden. That's which the beginning of communication. We call it fatic communication to open the channel. Now, let's look at number 2. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat. Now, persuading the persuader, the persuader is waiting, is already trained, has experience, previous experience, has premeditated position, he is waiting. Now let's see the superiority of persuading the persuader. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. What is the enemy? When you eat it, you shall die. What is the advancement of the distance of persuasion? Ye shall not die. For God don't know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will be open and you'll be like God's. Data. Knowing good and evil, and when the woman saw that the tree was good, it was not coercion, she was not forced. It was a dialogue, a marketing communication dialogue. When she noticed that it was good and that it was pleasant in the eyes, and a tree to be desired. Remember the biogenic drive. Biogenic drive simply means biologically conditioned drive. Environmental drive means drive that are conditioned by the environment. Psychographic drive means drive that are psychologically conditioned. I hope I've explained that. Now, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for the eye and was pleasant, what did she say? She desired to make she took up the fruit that and did it. And what happened? She did also give it to the husband. When your children cry, but mommy, I want to eat Indian meat. I want to eat Indian meat. They will go to buy. The children are going to become even the brand ambassadors. Directing you to buy what you do not ordinarily have to buy. And what moves them? Exposure to marketing communication messages. B. This the pig says beautiful generation. Thermoco says your wife is having an affair. And in 2006, World Cup advertisement, go made what we call adultery a mark to which two men, one that had committed adultery with the wife, who was hiding under the bed. And when the country scored the goal, when the husband arrived, to jump out there and embrace the husband of the the woman that he had committed adultery, and all of them were shouting, This is a goal! And all of a sudden, go, shut up. We call that caligram. Now, it was Plato who said, Argumentation worthy of a philosopher can convince even the gods themselves. Remember Adam and Eve were made by lower gods. And by God's creation, they were supposed to be superior being to even the father had fallen. And they don't see argumentation worthy of a philosopher can convince the gods themselves. Now, who is the rule? And listen to what happened. Look at what happened in, in, in this. It means that it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are an international sophisticated, a semi sophisticated, or you are a provincial in your local area. In the entire episode, all the available means of persuasion were involved. So what happened? The timing? I 
believe that Adam was not with Eve. So there was a context, the, the rhetorical context of temporal rhetoric, the time. Now, the consumer behavior, the semiotic inferences, the choice of sign, if you eat. Now the fruit now becomes a signifier of godlike attribute. Signifying to eat that long life existential depended on that fruit. And so he was able to convince that Eve. And Eve saw that it was pleasant to God. So the serpent, so the serpent, is, who was the Lucifer brand ambassador, he says, you know, if Lucifer had appeared on his own, maybe, just maybe, he would have noticed that, oh, that is Lucifer. And may have taken to her heels. But he had to sell a brand ambassador. So if you are a brand ambassador and you are promoting a bad food, a bad food, a bad political candidate, a bad search, a bad thing in every bad atmosphere and in every sphere of human endeavor, note that there was a cross on a black, a bad, a bad one, brand ambassador. Dawson puts it this way. Dawson says, grammar provides us with the essential structure that, that underlies all language and thought. But rhetoric is the use of grammar, power, and grace to achieve the persuasive situation. The high involvement consumer, every high involvement consumer will not just immediately accept the social. They will process information. But the low involvement person who just quickly act as soon as the persuasive message comes to the person. In a study I carried out on the rhetoric of healing in 2010, haptics was found to be the best form of therapeutic communication that generates healing. You will notice that even in church, some people are persuaded that this minister, that if he touches me, I will get well. In the hospital, some people are persuaded that if it is my friend before, Dr. Oyan, now, uh, Dr. Ian, and that he is the one that actually draws on me and get here. There is something about faith in persuasion. So the healing process, that is why our hospitals, our hospitals are killing a lot of our people. And I'm not afraid to say this. Because they do not understand the power of therapeutic communication in the process of persuasive healing. Just a simple touch that the doctor goes to touch the patient, how are you, how are you doing, generates state. In most cases, it is not a drug. If you study the elements of therapeutic communication in intrapersonal healing processes, you will find out that sometimes the drugs will simply go into the body and sit down in the belly without any process until information is generated in the brain to the T-cells of the body to activate those drugs, they will not work. So in persuading the persona in the therapeutic communication perspective, note that even the persona is aware of the synergies of the elements that will generate healing. One of the basic ingredients in persuasion, persuading the persona has been acknowledged by Kenneth Bob. And the book says that you and I must be one for you to be able to persuade me, and he calls it consubstantiality. That there must be an identification that will generate consubstantiality. So when we go, you can study the book and painter. So magnetic communication process is more of a transaction than just an interaction. As such, persuasion may occur either in the pre purchase behavior situation during the purchase behavior situation or the post-purchase behavior situation, including accidental purchases. However, I would like us to eventually look at what has happened in Nigeria when you look at the summary of the expenditure of APC and PDP in 2015. You will notice that they exceeded what was recorded by law in a study I carried out with Umana, uh, Dekan Umana in 2017. I stipulate that Maximum election expenses in Nigeria that a candidate should incur should not exceed one billion. The PDP and APC exceeded five billion. And what does that mean? 
It means that in the last United States election, more than $40 billion were expended in campaign organizations. Important of persuasion. They have come to know that the persuader is an active person in the persuasion process. They have come to realize that you cannot just persuade the persuader if you do not have the ingredient to persuade the persuader. So in conclusion, in one of the greatest speeches of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the reality, in Matthew chapter 5, chapter verse 3, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. I have met with a lot of pastors, and they have, I have found fault in the interpretation of that scripture. But as the dean scholar is writing, I have been able to bring that up so that I can explain that persuasively what the Lord was trying to say is that you must be found to be free in the spirit of drunkenness. You must be found to be free in the spirit, in the spirit of every negative biases. If you take public fun and you steal it, there is a spirit behind it. If you are alcoholic, there is a spirit behind it. If you are a drug addict, there is a spirit behind it. If you involve yourself in cultism, examination is conduct. All these things have negative spirit. And the Lord is saying, you must be poor in the spirit for you to inherit the kingdom of God. And so, so when we are poor in the spirit, and when we do this, on the day that we shall depart this world and go to the other realm, and live the terrestrial existence. The Lord Jesus Christ himself will salute you. His angels will welcome you. The batteries and the eccentric ovaries and torments of this unreal reality will vanish into the essence of nothingness. Mr. Chairman, sir, and Vice Chancellor, the market is vast. The offerings are many. Our drives and motives are conditioned and they generate many desires, wants and needs. The communication arena has provided and will keep providing the various sources to reach, inform, promote, and persuade the persuader. However, to achieve success, the professional persuader must step up the event. They must understand the dynamics of persuasion, the justifiable angle of propaganda. The relevance of rhetoric and the interference of signatures in getting the persuader through a gradient response process to the desired action. Remember, it is what we are exposed to that makes impression on us. It is what we store that we have the capacity to remember. And it is what we remember that we can reach. With the incoming communication, the latest communication, technology device called the audiovisual contact lens where the user will be able to store information in the lens and keep it. He will be waiting for you to come because he will even have information on you. You know this contact lens you were wearing. It is now devised as a communication system that will collect and store information. It will store information from prosthetic sensation it will store information from the olfactory sensation. It will store information from the tactile sensation. It will store information from all the video and audio sensations of the human body. And when it draws that, even seeing you, it will store information. When you are a bad product and you come back to sell a bad product, information will be generated and they will be used. That means that if this story that I'm telling you today, this is like a meeting, that you have intention to persuade anyone, you must begin to feel like that person. Speak in the language of that person. Understand what the name of that person. And live towards what the person knows, which is called empathetic communication. And in doing that, you will need to make sure that you identify with the person you want to persuade. You must make sure that you become consubstantially related. You must make sure that there is a thing of the rhetorical principles and the rhetorical figures are manipulated in perspective with causes. You must be able to now understand that there is semiotic relevance, that you choose your signs and symbols from paradigmatic and systematic sign relations, that each paradigm and symptom must have a relationship to create meaning from culture. I will cause the persuading persuader to be persuaded. Yeah. This is the I will tell you here 
Hallelujah. And I was called by my folks, the boy with the eagle eye. The boy with the eagle eye stands before you, Mr. Father with the complete eyes intact. And the boy with the eagle eye has landed.
He's really one of America's leading political and marketing communication experts. In his seminal book, Where is that work? Uh, it is not what you say, it is what people hear. Broke down the underlying effect of marketing communication through the use of words that have emotional connectivity with the people. And how people's minds can be wired and shaped by those simple words. Words can persuade people into doing or buying into a set of ideas that they would ordinarily not accept or even allow. As important as marketing communication is to the growth of the society, it can also have a double-edged effect. It can also destroy a society and create chasms of alienation and division. A marketing communication expert can use his or her power to persuade the people in the wrong direction. An expert who traffics in incidentally rhetoric that abuses his or her profile as an internet character assassin or the merchant of the rhetoric can by such gifts destroy a society rather than build it. A marketing communication expert that markets only pays or and sees no problem or sees no positive or good in the human condition can never build. He or she destroy by invoking the worst impulses in all. A media organization that seeks to demarcate ego aspect and demonize the symbol of authority does a disservice to its profession. I have always said that in an attempt for a journalist or mid-power to so break the news, such a journalist or media power should not break the fabric of our society. Because once the walls of the society will crumble, the journalist ceases to exist. I am happy that I'm given your aid. I am happy that given your intellectual help and what you have represented in our people and our state. You will continue to utilize your intellectual prowess to advance the ennobling cause of humanity and hold aloft the banner of development in our state. Congratulations, congratulations to the young for God bless you. Please, it demands that you give respect to our Vice Chancellor by not walking out of this auditorium while the Vice Chancellor is still seated. Comments, Mr. Vice Chancellor. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, I want to think that I have these times on the system protocol, but only after saying. Great Yasuris! Meaning, it 
Il va écouter Ngan et Bram. Professeur Pita a ici. Nous, nous pouvons pas y aller. Pita, à moi, tu es conscient. Tu n'as pas de problème. Tu sais pourquoi? Because the light has been matching and the eyes. So, but this one is from the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle. And let's see, I have said that you hear a lot of English today. I think I have been predicated, am I right? Truly, this man, Professor Isu, has showcased himself. His performance was superb. A masterpiece. If I am sure that there is no system that will not be happy to have him as a leader. I am sure that not only the family that is very proud today by his performance. I know students of communication class are happy to pass the time. You know, when the need came out to give a presence, a prize for that, or a book, somebody had a little bit of He said, he may be the last. He didn't say he did the last, he said he did the last. But something struck my mind. And what was that? That he graduated in 1990 in the University of Colorado University. And the following year, that was the end of the University of Colorado University. Can't imagine that. I only, I'm only afraid now that he's the one presenting. That I would not let him come out to that. But truly, he has done well. I'm proud of him. I don't know what to hear. The one I want to tell you, if you present my duty to summarize, is that there is no way you can run away from mathematics. There is no way you can run away from what? Mathematics. In fact, that reminds me of my days in school. One of my friends from Canada used to tell me, I'm going to read law. See, if I if I read law, law, you will give up. I want to read law. But today, you know that even if God is uh, Mathematics, but that's what it is today, an accountant. So you have mentioned to the thing of the incoming thing of FDI. Now that thing they call mathematics is called numerical uh, communication. Can you imagine that? A difficult thing to make simple. That's what they have done. But truly, he has opened a frontier. Which we, in every evening, myself, will have to research. A research for a time. He has said that animals do communicate. That's the new area we must investigate. To investigate, at the end of it all, where it is so. He also has said so that even plants, crops, do communicate. We will investigate. I know what they are going to come up with will be true because we are never before they cannot come to now. <laughs> Truly, Inoka Lecture is taken serious in the University of Ohio. Like some of you who want to say, it's not a deep pass. It can never be. It's meant for the, for the men and not for the boys. Today, he has professed. He has not only deceived himself, but he has actually appointed himself as a professor of international arts. And so, for that, I want to request, humbly request, that council members of council of the local lecturers that are here to please rise and take a bow for the commission. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sibasi. They are paid, they are paid, they are, they are used. So we thank God for it. Having said that, okay, uh, I want to tell you that we shall have a local lecture in December. Because we don't want us to come here with rice and soup, the government is why the local lecture is going on. And therefore, for that reason, we have moved the one of November to December, even though it's not customary for us to also observe it. December to the month of the January. And the person who presents, but that will be 
That would be the 87th in the Grand Age. And we presented by one of our seasoned promises, the Dean of Engineering and Waste. He has also won election to become the next dean. And he said, This is so. I keep the day along here. As you can see, he's hand to the team. In fact, he's ready to get ready to get to the night. And the third is eating what is good. The agricultural and food engineering perspective. That will be on January 27, 2022. So I want to thank once again our interesting guests for coming from far and near to add color to these events. May God bless the blessing and keep it for us in Jesus' name. Thank you. The band. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Because this event involves both the town and the gown, we normally take a very short time to acknowledge the presence of some key persons who attended occasion of this nature. And at the same time, we introduce the manager, the manager of this university, to you. We also appreciate members of the Land Government Council of Innovation Group their presence for coming to grace this occasion. We thank the Deputy Governor of Abad the Kids here represented for finding time to attend this occasion. For the Lord, we ask for Paul Mr. Su and the University of the Lord. We found the DBC administration, the University Register, the BOSA, the University Librarian. And we tell you that we appreciate that contribution to the resources of today's occasion. We thank all our part in front of these holders, whether saving or retired. We also thank principal officers from sister institutions. And I use the opportunity to particularly thank the Dr. Manuel Down. He is the proprietor of the new waste and very promising private university in the Fargo State. And that is the top university at the Fargo The proposal of instances, our chairman of the of deans, all other deans, members of the university senate, we thank you for our presence at this occasion. Government Fortuner is here present, religious leaders, political stalwarts, religious and cultural groups. We thank you for your love for you and for us all, a in particular. The inaugural leader presenter, the inaugural leader presenter, we thank you for a job well done. And the modern lecturer, we thank you for having us here today and for showcasing ourselves very well. The lecturer's family, thank you for being, for us as soon, up very well, in a good way. That good bottle which we gave him is the foundation of what we have seen today. Grace and dear students, uh, because there are not many I will part that stage, you are welcome. The Department of Music, the caretakers, we appreciate their works, which have contributed to bring to this occasion successfully. Members of the press, thanks for always coming 
and for always presenting us in a good way to the world. We also thank the anchors of today's occasion. And our prayer is that the God that God has sent in here will always take us back safely in Jesus' name. Amen. The golden formality is the bank will lead us to take the lecturer has actually done a very good work and he has actually given to the public the essence of the paper. I think it is it is something that everyone will live to remember. Uh, sorry, uh, you, you, you have confirmed that the lecturer is able as relig uh, religiously and scholarly yes. define his topic? Yes, yes. Without any doubt or education, he has done justice to that topic. Sorry, sir. Uh, you are a professor of... Uh, painting. Painting. Uh, we are speaking with uh, Professor Bess Chibo, professor of painting. He was a 46th inaugural lecturer of the university with the topic... Uh, sir, do you still remember the uh, topic of the inaugural lecture? The meaninglessness in the meaning, the, meaning, the meaningfulness in the meaningless visual vocabulary of painting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, let me thank uh, the management of uh, the University of Bill, Great Citadel of Excellence, where I came up from, for sustaining uh, this content-driven uh, intellectual discourse. Of the inaugural lecture of the University of Europe. I'm also excited that uh, I, the sixth inaugural lecture was uh, delivered by Professor Peter Isu, the, uh, the head of the Department of Communication Arts. I was about seeing the dean of the Faculty of uh, Communication and Media Studies. But in all, uh, like we rightly said, the theme uh, persuading the persuaders, uh, man cannot not communicate, but above all, uh, the emphasis on the communication arena, uh, emphasizing and strengthening the basic templates of communication of informing, entertaining, and also educating along the lines of the templates of uh, the inaugural lecture in enhancing marketing communications. Also learned a lot also uh, from the semiotic relevance of uh, communication structures uh, in the development of the society. I think it's, a, it's been a wonderful experience. It's been content driven and above all, uh, it also builds up uh, the intellectual capacity of those of us who sat through all through the, uh, the, the duration of the program to, to, to enjoy the content away from work and also developing ourselves. It's been very interesting. I look forward to hopefully attending another inaugural lecture, not just because I'm biased, because I'm coming from the communication sector, but generally speaking. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Dr. Vinedine, Dr. Devin Nana, and the Director of President Yo Book Club. The founder. The founder, yes. The founder of Yo Book Club. Sir, uh, it is a tradition in the university that uh, whenever a scholar, uh, even a professor, has to present a lecture. Yeah, it's been very interesting. Uh, Professor Isu, he has a erudite, very cerebral uh, scholar. And today, he has showcased himself in a rare field of uh, integrated marketing communications. He's done well, he has brought out to the fore uh, a lot of ideas. Which would stimulate thinking and further research in the field of uh, integrated marketing communication. It's done well. But do you believe with him that a communicator can truly persuade the persuaders? Of course, why not? Communication is a process of persuading, and all he has said uh, is that there are tools, there are skills, there are that if applied will help persuaders to persuade. Um, now, if we can explain, how can we explain it to a layman? Persuading the persuaders, a rhetorical symbiotic direction to marketing communication. How can yeah, we simplify this? simply topic? telling everybody that for you to succeed in the process of communication. Number one, you should be empathetic. You should know the feelings. You should know the context. You should know the environment of the person. What, what, what are the motivations? What are the influences that you should be able to take this into account? and that you should also be able to use the signs, the, the semiotics, that the person will understand, otherwise you won't cut it in communication.